and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. This is the final part in my horse painting series and in this video we're going to go ahead and add the mane and the final details to the horse's face. If you want to follow along with traditional materials check out part one in this series where I have a list of all the paint, canvas, and brushes that I use. The app that we're going to be using is Infinite Painter for Android. And I want to go ahead and start by adding a little bit more of some details along the jawline. And I'm using a dark burnt umber color. If you're following along with your acrylics, you'd use burnt umber. Or burnt sienna with ultramarine blue to darken it if you don't have any burnt umber. And I'm wanting to use a small brush here, but again, we want to go ahead and smudge everything in and have really soft lines. So here I'm just trying to find out what would be the best blending brush in Infinite Painter. And so I was trying some of the chalk brushes, just trying to get that look that you get when you smudge it with acrylic on real canvas and you use a paper towel or your fingers. So I was trying to replicate that in Infinite Painter. And so I was looking through a bunch of the um, chalk brushes and just trying to get that uh, real smooth edge and smooth blending. And so I'm just working on his neck a little bit and I'm going to add a little bit more some highlights and some dark lines under the eye. Again, you want to smooth these out. And this is just working a little bit more on the structure of the eyelids. And I'm just going from place to place and adding little tiny details now. The details are getting smaller. The paint is getting smaller now because we're adding the final details, but you still want to smooth them out. And here I'm working on refining his ears. And I'm adding a little bit of dark on the edges. And then a little bit of the highlight on top of the ears where it's catching the light. Working a little bit on the structure of the ears here. He's got dark uh, brown or almost blackish hair inside his ears there. And the ears are fuzzy inside. So you want to go ahead and kind of give that smudgy, fudgy fuzzy look in his ears. Say that three times fast. Um, so anyway, just go ahead and work on the refinements there and it's catching a little bit of light on the edges. And so I'm adding a little bit of some burnt sienna with white acrylic gesso for those following along with acrylic paints. And you just kind of want to work on the, the shape of his ear right there. And then finally, I'm going to start adding the mane. And we want it to be a dark, dark brown, almost blackish color. So what you can do if you're following along with your acrylics or oil paints, it will work with oil paints as well, is to use burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And you can also throw in dioxazine purple, and that will make a nice, rich black color. If you don't want to mix all those colors together and you just have some black paint, use your black paint and put in some burnt umber because we don't want it to be a total flat black. We want it to have some richness to it, some undertones of some brown colors and some bluish colors. We, we don't want it to look so flat. We want it to have a rich, deep color. And here I'm just kind of smudging it out with the Vermeer brush. And you can probably use your number six flat brush if you're following along traditionally. And you just kind of want to feather it out on the edges to make it look like hair. And then we want to add some fine hairs on the mane. And so I'm using a, a really small brush. And you can use um, the Leo brush or the Vermeer brush and Infinite Painter. And use your script brush if you're following along traditionally. And I'm kind of smudging those out because we want, we want a gray highlight. So you would use kind of a grayish color. Ultramarine blue and burnt sienna with white acrylic gesso. Just make a light gray. 
sort of smudge out the first group of lines that we put in because that kind of just gives you the highlights that are on the the main there and then if you look at your photo reference you notice that there are some brown hairs in among these really dark black and dark brown hairs so I'm adding some of those in there some of the brown hairs and smudging those out but not all of the hairs are being smudged out just a little bit at the top kind of let the hairs at the bottom uh, look individual and then you can go back in with some of your darker black mixture and add individual hairs along the edge of the mane there and just kind of uh, bring them over the top of uh, some of the brown hairs and then you can go back and add more light brown hairs in there just to give it the uh, look of the light catching individual hairs and maybe there's a slight breeze and they're being blown in the wind and you want to go ahead and just keep doing that till you kind of get the effect that you want don't make it all look like it's individual hairs but just add a few along the edges of the clumps that you can see in the horse's mane so I'm doing that and then I'm adding a little bit more fine detail again on the horse's head you just want to add little pockets of dark and light at this stage you don't want any big changes just add little bitty uh, splotches of color I'm working a little bit along the veins there that are on his uh, nose there and I'm adding a little bit of a reddish brown just to add a little bit more color to him and you can use burnt sienna with cadmium red light thrown in just just to give it a little bit more of some color on the horse and then I'm refining the jawline making it a little bit smaller and then I wanted to work a little bit more on the muscles of the neck and I'm adding a little bit of some uh, dark brown again you can use burnt umber if you're following along traditionally and this is just the final touches the final refinements that you want on your picture to just kind of give the the final little details here but again you want all your lines to be soft and so I'm kind of trying to figure out which one blends the best and I finally decided that the vine charcoal setting an infinite painter actually works the best for blending and but I tried a few of the others like the Vermeer brush and I tried um, several of the different chalk ones and I just kind of was trying to to get the right one here uh, to see to make the the look that I wanted for his neck because you want a little bit of the highlight right there where you can see his muscles and so I was working on that and just trying to get it to blend in the way I wanted it to and I went back and added some uh, highlight a little bit of light orange there make sure that it got smudged in good and just kind of a little bit more on the ears just highlighting those a little bit more and refining the shape a little bit more against the mane working a little bit more on the jawline right there and again on the neck and I decided I wanted a little bit of some darker brown colors but still in the burnt sienna family you kind of want to use all these browns and that are in the same family just for um, color continuity on your horse because you wouldn't want to put say like a big bright yellow or big bright garish orange on him it just it would look jarring and it it would look way out of place so you want to have colors that are in the same family and are that blend together and go together so I'm just kind of working a little bit more on the details on top of his head on the jawline again on the neck around the eye just kind of refining the eye shape and then here I'm going to add the final touch to the eye and that's the highlight and you just add a tiny little dot to the eye and kind of smudge it out a little bit and that just kind of adds a whole new life to your painting when you put that little 
highlight in the horse's eye. And here I'm just working a little bit more on the shadows under the mane on top of his head. And just kind of um, working a little bit more on the shadows of his neck. You want to step back and look at it at, or shrink it down. In Infinite Painter you would shrink it down and that makes it look like it's from a distance. And then you know, if you're working in real life on a canvas, you step back from it and look at it and see how it looks. And so finally, <clears throat> I wanted to go ahead and um, add a little bit of some dark blue around the edges of the painting. And you can do this with acrylics. Just put a light glaze of paint around the edge and smudge it in. I just wanted to kind of darken the edges so that the viewer's eye would look more at the horse and that it would sort of highlight the horse more because there would be a little bit of some lighter uh, blue around the, the horse and that just kind of makes it look like a spotlight sort of. But I didn't make it real solid. We just wanted a little bit of a light glaze there and I used the airbrush for that in Infinite Painter. And then I went ahead and signed it, but if you've been following me, you know that that doesn't mean that I'm through. <laughs> so I went ahead and worked a little bit more right there on those veins that are on his nose right there. And I added a little bit more of some darker colors there, just kind of tweaked the shape of his veins just a little bit. But I made sure that I smudged these in because we don't want to leave any harsh lines. And so I'm just kind of working on... A little bit of the shape of the veins there and just making sure that I smudge them in not adding very much paint if you're following along traditionally you would use your script brush just really small thin lines because we don't want to mess this up we we're about got the painting done and we don't want to get it messed up so I'm just kind of adding just tiny little details there and just smudging them in and then stepping back and looking at it and seeing if I like it. And I decided that was good enough. I should probably stop before I mess it up. So I went ahead and finished it. So this is the end of my horse painting series. And I'm going to be starting something new pretty soon. So if you're interested, hit that subscribe button. Thanks everybody for watching. Thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions or any suggestions about what you would like to see next, just leave them in the comments down below and I will catch you later.